So here we are, welcome to the Angels. We're now back underneath the layout, looking at all the wiring that I've put in place for the ground throws. All the ground throws are fixed in place and wired up, except one. All the tracks have power feeds beyond the insulated parts. And we can see that I've now three separate bus areas. At this end of the layout we can see where I also have the track feed wires coming down and they feed in there we can see these are the wires that power the ground throws so yeah I think it's all wired up now we just need to do some test running get the little local on and make sure that as we come up onto the layout all the ground throws are now fixed in place they're all functioning. We just need to get this little local on and check that all the sidings are working and that power is passing through the frogs the correct way. So let's get the train on the track and see how she runs. But first, let's tidy up this area, get rid of all this rubbish. Now that all the rubbish is off the layer, I'm going to go around and give it a quick hoover because sometimes you might drop some debris and it could fall in between the points so I'm going to make sure I've hoovered it all, cleared all the areas, all the track double check the points, the positions of them give the track a clean because it's been a week or so since I've run anything on it so just give it a quick wipe over and then we can get testing trains <music> My track cleaning method of choice is a block of wood with a piece of old denim jean wrapped around it, taped onto it, so it gives you that material and some isopropyl alcohol. So just a tiny wee splodge the alcohol. So you've now got alcohol on this and then because it's the width of the rails that's what size you cut the wood to and we just kind of gently run across the rails lifting any grime or dirt not pushing down too hard just gently wiping across the head of the rails This is what I used on the Angel Share and that layout to this day after three years still runs sweet as a nut, no issues. Every now and then I use a track rubber which I know is heinous to a lot of people but I do like using this block of wood and a little bit of denim wrapped around it and soak it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol 99.9% let's run that round all the way so yeah that's it done now let's try and run some trains so what we'll do for our test is initially we're going to set up a train just running on parcel of the loop and then it's really through all this track work we want to make sure that the ground throws are wired properly and that the power is going where we want it to go. Let's change the switch. Through here, through there. It's not the best local but it's purely for testing current, it's not going to be one for doing slow running. So we'll check that the local can get power back into the... Yep, 
see so going through there okay then we're going to send it up here we'll send it off into here first see how that goes seems to be working okay that way and into this side and now we'll send it up here we'll send it down these sidings the engine shed a little bit slow on that frog because it's a little 4.0 this ground throw isn't wired up this one is just purely because it's an insole frog I've just left it as is so it should run okay with the larger bait locals There we go. Oh, lovely. We've got an issue here, Captain. What was that? Ah, the wee issue of that. Ah, see. Actually, it looks like this insulated plate isn't fully flush on the rail, so hence the test run. I'll go on sort this and then try a larger local and get something moving around this so thumbs up all good so far just need to get this little issue sorted that's why we do test running yeah i got this little bit sorted there was a little bit too much gap between the rails and uh, this rail was pushed flush against the y point so what i've done is even the gap on either side of it and we now have just a couple of mil either side. I've left expansion gaps because in this area in the living room I have a radiator right there which isn't railway really friendly so any heat on this could cause the track to expand so I've tried to leave as many little expansion gaps on the track as possible. Also I had actually drilled a hole and put a track pin down through here which pushed the rail just that little not even half a millimeter below the other railhead so by taking that pin out it's released it up so it's now level and problem sorted that's it but that's why we test the trains before we play with them just to make sure that everything's kind of running smooth so if that's the only issue so far very happy easy to fix didn't need to lift anything We'll put another pin in just further along here, away from the end of the rail, so I avoid it pulling it down. But it will still keep this curve in place because there's still a little bit of flex in that. So I'll drill a hole, put a pin down. I'll get the 060 slope tender out and we'll run that round and we'll see how we go. Get some shunting done. Switching. Basically moving box cars around the layout. All good fun. So here we are at the layout ready to do a little test run of these box fans in the flat wagon. Got a caboose on there so just now we have enough room for three of these plus the caboose and the run round. Now I play trains a lot so I just figure these things out as I go along. I only pre-plan so much but Sometimes the fun in playing trains is finding out exactly what works on your layout, what wagons run best, what locals run best, and basically how you're setting up your industries and what goes where. I have an idea of what I'm doing on that and what will be coming in and coming out. But it's mostly just to have some fun switching, uh, running some operations and basically see trains running by. So we'll get this little 060 off and running around the layout. We'll set up the camera in a better position. Now here we go, give it a little run, see how it goes. Yeah. 
Yeah, see with the tight radius you can actually see how the train just slows down a little bit going through them, but that doesn't phase me at all. I'm running it at about 50%, so seems to be pulling that train fine. Running smooth. Like so. So what we can do is start uncoupling and moving stuff about. Ideally the caboose has got to go in here. So there is the shunt move, you could pull the whole train forward and reverse the whole train in, which gets it off the main line if other trains are wanting to run past. Uh, or you could maybe sometimes what they do is it would drop the caboose here, pull in here with the train, leave these wagons here, go back, grab the caboose, come out and put that in there. So on this occasion I'm just going to pull the whole train forward and reverse the caboose back into the caboose siding. Set all the switches accordingly. Apologies if my voice has been a bit quiet in the past few videos, but when you're doing this stuff at home, sometimes I just you're a little bit self-conscious if other people are about and they're listening to you talking to a camera and talking all things train. Oh, we have a little derailment here, so we need to investigate that. So the knuckle coupling on the end of this one seems to be, you see, actually not holding it. So this is the joy of testing. I know I need to get a little special stick thingy with a light on it that I can poke in here. Probably got a toothpick somewhere where I could do that. But you can see there's a little derailment here with the back the back bogey on this GT as it's coming through. So again, that's the whole point of testing your layout to see what issues, what runs, what has difficulties. Is there a difference in track profile? So carry on running trains and seeing how it all goes together. If we have any more issues as we reverse uh, shunt all the box fans into their sightings. That's why I'm down at this level. So I can see exactly what's what. I won't detach any of these, I'm just going to run them into all the sidings and see how the local in these perform. I reckon fit three in there comfortably, which is good. The frogs seem to be working with these ground throws, so that's it, got that sussed. Seems to be working a treat. So they fit in there, that could be dropped off there, there could be a switcher 
ready to come out and take move them if they need be. But the way I'm going to work operations, the difficulties involved are pulling engines out when there's stock here and getting engines in when there's stock there. So that'll be all part of planning timetables and stuff and what goes where and how. So yeah, if we pull the local out now. Pick these up. I do you like these ground throws? They're amazing. They just when you click them, they just feel very firm and secure. I'm sure. This is just so much fun when you're just playing trains, using your imagination, just having fun, whiling away your time. That one came off the end of the track there, that's why we need to get the little end of line buffer stops so we'll take this flat wagon out take the local to the engine shed, it gets top up in the coal, top up on the water. Yeah. See when I was designing this on SCARM, one of the ideas was this size of local, I had in a little block on SCARM that I could move about. And I felt as though there was enough room, even with two box fans in here, to get this local in, in order for it to run through to the engine shed. And yeah, proof's in the pudding. It fits. All the electro fog points are working a treat. crash right into the end of the engine shed, classic, but yeah, that's it, it's basically all working, all working indeed, let's go over this little point here that we had an issue earlier with, seems to be running through that fine,
the spot with a couple of hay here. Couple in the front more for show. Yeah, it is. It's not necessarily one of those operating couples. It's just a little knuckle like that, but it doesn't actually open. So I don't know if we, I don't know if I'd be using the front of that anyway. So yeah, let's get the local out. Yes, sir. There we go, first bit of shunting at Angels Ridge Railroad Company. Local in and out engine shed. Dropped off some freight, picked up some freight, put the caboose in the caboose siding. I would say that was nigh on the perfect test run, bar some little issues here and there. Niggle here, little derailing on one of the wagons here, so I can see that point's a little bit loose, so I might put a little pin in that. See that's flexing there, and I've still got to put a pin in here. But otherwise, I would say that was a successful test run. So there we go, one run and an amended idea when the train comes round rather than being on this line we bring it into this line which brings it forward into this position where we can then quite easily reverse the caboose back into the caboose siding. It's getting longer than this caboose in August but yeah Told you you got to play trains and then you figure out as you go. Wonderful. Superb hobby. And now to test the Alco S2 by Atlas. The thing is, when I got this locomotive, it had horn hook couplings. So I decided to remove them because I had got some packs of the KD number no. 5 couplers at Model Rail Scotland this year and decided to install those onto the locomotive in order for it to pull the freight and get everything up to the KD standards that I expect to have on this layout.
Coming up next on the Angels, I will be painting and weathering all the track and the sleepers. I will also be putting down various forms of ballast, as well as starting to work in some scenic details, putting the side backdrops in and working on the mountain scene at the back of the small town that facilitates the Angels Ridge Railroad Company area. Thank you. 